everyone. Welcome to Shell Point Today for Monday, April 13th. I'm Adam Brown. On today's show, we will learn about a new health connections class, Bar Basics, beginning later this month. And Melody Desolet will get the full curriculum on the school supply drive starting this week. But first, we want to remind you of the Concerts and Conversations event with violinist Anna Zukervanik that happens tonight at the Woodlands. Born in Uzbekistan, Anna began her music studies at the age of four, and at the age of 14, she won first place in the 2005 Glazunov Violin Competition in Paris. She is currently studying professional performance in violin at Lynn University Conservatory of Music in Boca Raton, Florida. She has performed in a number of orchestras, including the Hamburg Symphony Orchestra, and you can meet her tonight in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands at 7 p.m. For tickets, stop by either service desk or call 454-2067. Tomorrow afternoon, Ising's Travel will show you the amazing trips they offer for 2015 and 2016. This presentation will give you all of the information you need to book your next getaway. It starts at 2.30 in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. Tomorrow evening, don't forget to attend the Play Readers Cafe performance in the Social Center on the island. Sign up is required, so don't forget to reserve your seat for enjoying monologues and skits performed by residents who participate in the Play Readers group. Light refreshments will be served along with laughter and fun at 7.15 p.m. Looking ahead, next Tuesday is the annual Shell Point Variety Show. This year's theme is Summer Memories. Make sure to attend this enjoyable time of classic summer tunes, acts, and laugh out loud performances from fellow residents and staff members. The fun begins at 7.15 in the Village Church next Tuesday. It's time for the School Supply Fun Drive, which starts this Thursday and runs through the 30th. The drive helps to provide the supplies that Shell Point employees' children need when heading back to school in the fall. Melody Desolet sat down with Dorothy Erickson of Nautilus to talk about the drive, along with a special little person. Hi Shell Point, I'm Melody Desolet here today with a special guest, Dorothy Erickson from Nautilus, and my very own son, Bradley Morrison, and we are here to talk about the School Supply Fun Drive. Dorothy, can you tell me when this is happening? It starts on April the 16th and it runs through the month until the 30th. Excellent. So can you give our viewers a little insight? What what is this fun drive for? Yeah, it's a fun, a fun drive to raise money to buy supplies that our employees' children and grandchildren need when they go to school. The schools give out these long lists of things they expect the children to have, and it can be quite daunting uh, for the parents uh, to supply that. Okay, so what you say these bags, what are we looking, how many bags do we want to Fill. We want to fill 650 bags, which is actually the same number as last year, but this year we would really like to be able to put more things into each bag. Okay, would you describe what goes into the bags? Oh my, there's all kinds of notebooks. There's crayons, colored pencils, scissors, erasers, glue, glue sticks, um, uh, bags to put their things in, uh, pencils, I'm sure there's more, and right now my mind's drawing a blank, <laughs> Melody. <laughs> what ways can our residents give to this fun drive? Okay, we want money because that way we buy the supplies, we get a discount, and every bag has the same thing in it. Whereas if you ask for donations of supplies, there's no continuity. Uh, they can give by check or by cash, and there will be a box on each service desk in the Woodlands and at the island and all contributions are tax deductible. Excellent. 
So how would our residents make out their checks if they choose to do it that way? Okay, and that is actually the preferred way because then we have the name. If they give cash, they have to put a, a sign on with their name if they want a receipt. They make the check out to the Shell Point School Supply. Now, Dorothy, I know we're doing this fun drive fairly early for the school year. Mm -hmm. When does distribution take place? We give the supplies out in the middle of July uh, because that's when most of the stores are talking about school supplies. Now, you had mentioned that the school supply is for children and grandchildren mm -hmm. of Shell Point employees. How would a family qualify? Well, we work with the Human Resources Department because a lot of our employees have a lot of input into their grandchildren. They're either responsible for them or they help support them financially. And it's for children in grades K, kindergarten through grade five. So Dorothy, do you have anything to say to our residents to really encourage them for the school supply fund drive this year? Well, all I can say is that last year when we passed them out, everyone was extremely appreciative. And I think it's a wonderful way for us as residents to show the employees how much we appreciate all they do for us, in addition to the Christmas fund that we do. Well, Shell Point, being an employee with my own little son who's not quite school age yet, it's a great example of the employees that we have here at Shell Point. And for you, we are so, so thankful and so grateful for your generosity. The school supply drive takes place from April 16th through April 30th. You can donate through either service desk. And if you make a checkout, it's to the school supply fun drive. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. We so appreciate you. As we get older and begin to lose muscle mass, it's important to keep them from becoming fatigued. Exercises to stretch and tone those muscles is important. Keeping yourself flexible and testing your muscular endurance can be achieved in a new Health Connections class entitled Bar Basics, taught by fitness coordinator Melanie Brode. Heather Batty talks with her about the class where you'll burn calories and create long, lean muscles. Hi, I'm Heather Batty, Resort Services. Today I'm so excited to be here today with Melody Brode and she's our fitness coordinator here and she's starting a really neat class. It's called Bar Basics. Can you tell us about that class? Actually Heather, I learned about Bar Basics from you and it's the, basically the principles of ballet and I don't want the word ballet to scare off any of my men participants because football players do ballet, isn't that right? Yes, yes they do. So this is, I looked at it and I thought, you know what, this would be a good way to incorporate it into my Health Connections class. So I did a little bit of research and I think it's a, it's a great way to get lower body strength, core strength, posture, and it's very low impact. So I'm excited and I'll show you a couple moves yeah. today if you'd like to see. I'd love to see what you learn. Okay. Well, basically it's, you can use a bar. We're also gonna use body bars and we're also gonna use small handheld weights and, um, and um, toning balls. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's a basic move that you can do, and it's called a sliding side step. And you just step out to the side and bring your leg in. This is a great way to warm up. I've noticed in ballet that they do one side to exhaustion. Instead of alternating sides like on my normal class, they tend to do one side at a time. You can make this a little bit harder with a circle to warm up your hip. Okay, your core's working, your hips working, and your whole body's contracted the whole time. With this, I'd probably add a knee lift and a reach to get your obliques. Your core's tight. So that would be just a basic starting warm up. Excellent. With <clears throat> bar basics and the word ballet, what we want to stress is that ballet and football players alike use the same muscles for coordination the movements that you're gonna use. So that's why we wanna make sure all the men out there actually come to this class. It's, um, the only prerequisite is senior fitness test, mm -hmm. and you can sign up and take it. It's gonna be on Mondays and Wednesdays starting April 27th, 11.30 to 12. So I hope everybody shows up. Excellent, we'll see you there. Have a great day, Thank everyone. You. Did you know that this week is celebrated as National Volunteer Week? 
Here at ShellPoint, we certainly appreciate all of our volunteers who are a vital part of our functionality. For more on this observance, here's Melody Desolay. Hi ShellPoint, we are celebrating National Volunteer Week. It's from April 12th through April 18th. Now, President Richard Nixon established this as an executive order in 1974 as a way to recognize and celebrate volunteers. And that's exactly what we're going to do here today. So follow me on our journey of volunteer work. What do you think about volunteering here at Shell Point? Oh, volunteering is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm a court rep. So that's a volunteering position and I work here and I love working here because there's a lot of activity and people and it's a good thing to give back. Um, we're all here, we've lived this long and we live in this wonderful place and we owe it to our fellow residents, I think, and to our ha ourselves. Does my heart good to volunteer. What do you think of volunteering? I enjoy it tremendously, particularly the library, which is where I usually volunteer. <laughs> what does volunteering do for you as an individual? Uh, volunteering, I think, helps keep us very much alive, very happy. Um, it just brings out so many good things, just to be with so many good people to share our wonderful days with. I thoroughly enjoy volunteering in the library. I've always loved libraries and, and uh, feel comfortable in them, and the people that work here are are um, such help and so kind. It's, a, it's just a wonderful experience. I'm here with Barbara Hilton and we are celebrating National Volunteer Week. And Barbara, you have been a volunteer here at Shell Point for quite some time. What is your favorite position that you have held and why? Well, I think my baby, as I call it, the Holiday Craft Bazaar, which is always the first weekend in November. And we started off 10 years ago with 24 people. Last year we had 54, and it has just grown and grown. And I have to say that really has to be my favorite there. Floss, we are celebrating you for National Volunteer Week. What do you think about volunteering here at Shell Point? Well, I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea. It keeps pissy people busy and, it, and um, gives them a meaning, life of meaning. It's wonderful. My husband is a minister and uh, so I do s serve with him as a pian pianist for a church and different things in the church. Wonderful. How would you say volunteering at Shell Point is different than other volunteer efforts? I've enjoyed it immensely. You meet so many wonderful people in and out here and every where uh, all over the country and I've just enjoyed it so much and it just makes my day and then I get to sell things that I make here. I am here with Barbara Lau from Parkwood and she has been a very active volunteer in the gift shop for quite some time. Barbara, what would you say your favorite part about volunteering is? I used to have a shop of my own and I just loved coming in here and well, discombobulating everything. <laughs> and uh, so I've been working here. We've been here 10 years, and I've worked ever since we've been here. I am with Eleonora Harmachek from Solana, and as you can see, she's busy making some beautiful pottery, but she also volunteers here at Shell Point. Now, Eleonora, what do you think about volunteering here at Shell Point? Well, I mean, it just fills up your time, right? and <laughs> it keeps you going. And I, I volunteer in the butterfly garden, also in the gift shop. And uh, I also have a garden plot, you know, which I take care of. And that keeps you busy, which is good, right? Yes. And play tennis and exercise. So that is my schedule for you. And it keeps you busy and you're enjoying life. Hopefully it's also fit, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I am here with Ted Ashley from Coquina, and as you can see, he has a computer behind him, so he's our technologically savvy volunteer today in the UPS room. And Ted, we are celebrating volunteers for National Volunteer Week, and I have a question for you. How has volunteering at Shell Point 
changed your life for the positive? I would say it changed my life because I do things which I think are worthwhile and UPS is one of them. But my other volunteering is like kayaking and that one's fun. And so it just makes life worthwhile, like you say. And I volunteered here for most of the time I have been here. And I, it's not only the work that we do that helps people, it's we get a chance to associate and talk to each other about different world affairs and so forth. Of course, we all have different opinions and we respect each other's opinions. Dave, how would you say that volunteering has changed your life here at Shell Point specifically? Well, it's given me opportunity to get acquainted with quite a lot of people that I would never meet otherwise. Like people coming in here, occasionally I know who they are, I know them well. Other times I've never seen them before. But then also the, the group we have here, we have a lot of fun together. We talk, we only spend a short time together once a week, but during that period of time, especially when we have free time, we'll talk together. We solve the problems of the world here together. We really do. Now, Ruth, you have been a volunteer for quite some time here at Shell Point. How has volunteering changed your life here at Shell Point? Well, when I first came, this is where I made my new friends and I found out how much fun it was to sit around and talk and do something worthy and uh, get acquainted with people from other parts of the community. Wonderful. Well, we celebrate you during National Volunteer Week. Now, as you saw on our journey throughout the island of Shell Point, that was just a small sampling of the many volunteers that we have here. In fact, in the year of 2014, our volunteers totaled 131,000 volunteer hours. And as you can see, our volunteers are as varied as their answers. So from being fun to social to worthwhile, there's all sorts of volunteer jobs to do here at Shell Point and we celebrate you. Thank you for joining me. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church connections, right after this important Listening to the Words preview from David Howenstein. In this week's Encore Listening to the Words program, Sarah emerges from the cellar door to discover a languid afternoon where summer sunlight enjoys a cheerful rendezvous with fancy flowers. In another story, suddenly out from the doghouse and down the ramp run Dolly the dog, followed by four little balls of fur. Then in an article, we learned that slurpy dog kisses are not only safe, but also good for you. Listen to a letter by an 80-year-old sighted woman assuring us that being blind need not keep people from seeing clearly. Also enjoy poems from Shell Pointers Yvonne Schneff, Nita Deweese, and Anna Marie Tesoriero. I'm your reader host, David Howenstein, inviting you to listen to this 30-minute program, first aired the week of May 20th, 2013. Tune in to Shell Point's Channel 12, any hour of every day this week, on listening to the words. Thanks for tuning in to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy, and I'm here with Bev Chanley, and we're going to let you know all the activities happening at Shell Point today. We're going to start with men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts at 8 a.m. And we have virtual bowling meeting at the Resident Activity Center at 8.45. Billiards will be played at the Resident Activity Center at 9.15. And the Lollygaggers Paddlers will head out for their weekly outing at 9.15 and they meet at the kayak storage. Pottery with instruction is available at 9.15 in the Pottery Studio down in the Island Tunnel. And at 10 a.m. we have men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Susie Q heads out for a trip. Matanzas on the Bay at 10 a.m. and you do need to sign up for that. At 10.15, we have a presentation from the Center of Rehabilitation of Wildlife, also known as Crow, and they're talking about birds of prey, and you might meet a few new friends, and that's at the Social Center. At 10.30, we have Disciple Men's Study Group in the game room of the Woodlands, and we have a table tennis clinic in the Tarpon Room at 10.45. 
Our last morning activity is at 11.30. It's a Health Connections class, Specifics in Cardio Conditioning. That's in the Health Club and that's currently full. Here's Bev to tell you all about our afternoon. Thank you, Caitlin. We're going to start out our afternoon activities at 12 o'clock. That's with Mahjong. That's played at the Sable Room of the Woodlands. At 1.15, we have Advanced Table Tennis. That's in the Tarpon Room down in the tunnel. Also at 1.15, we have Samba, the card game in the Resident Activity Center. The Model Train Room will be open for tours from 1.30 to 3.30. And we have a Health Connections class at 1.45, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1, and that's in the Health Club, and it's currently fall. At 2 o'clock, the Beady-Eyed Bead Club will be at the Oak Room at the Woodlands. And we have another Health Connections class at 3. It's Pilates Stretch, and that's down in the Health Club. At 3.30, we have Aqua Agility and Conditioning at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Pickleball will be at the Pickleball Court at 4 o'clock. And at 5.30, we have the Singles Table available at the Crystal Dining Room on the island. We're going to move to 6.30 where you'll find Duplicate Bridge in the Game Room of the Woodlands. At 7 o'clock, we have Concerts and Conversation Series. We have Anna Sukervonik, the violinist. She'll be at the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. You do need to have a ticket for that. And at 7 o'clock, we have Square Dancing at the Health Club. That's currently full. Well, we're happy you joined us today, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Menus for Monday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is Petite Strip Loin Steak with Baked Potatoes and Asparagus. The dinner special is Old Home Cooking Night for eleven ninety five, and the soup of the day is chicken gumbo. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a chili cheeseburger with onion rings for seven twenty five. The dinner special is grilled papaya pork with mashed potatoes and broccoli for eight twenty five, and the Palm Grill is closed on Monday. All menus are available twenty four hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with one of my colleagues, David Pavey. And uh, David, uh, we've been in sharing ministry together for the last couple of years, but uh, we're also, we've also learned recently that one of our dear colleagues, uh, Glenda Stevenson, uh, who has served the church for more than seven years, uh, is uh, also is, is leaving our, uh, our employ and uh, onto other things. And uh, certainly we're uh, saddened about that because Glenda has a great deal of uh, contribution and competence that she has shared with our fellowship in many different dimensions. And uh, I know that she's affected your ministries, uh, the things that you've been involved with, and Very she certainly so. affected mine. So tell us a little bit about how, how Glenda has uh, supported uh, you and your ministries uh, and the things that you've touched. Uh, Glenda has been my immediate supervisor in several of the ministries that I've been asked to undertake while here. Mm -hmm. And one of those is the Alpha Course. Mm -hmm. uh, she's always been a resource. She's known the history of how this has gone. And so she's been a behind-the-scenes advisor for me and, and a great encouragement there. It gives me a sense of accountability mm -hmm. for the way I do the work and, and how it goes. And we're always excited to see the, uh, the evaluations that come in at the end of the time. Then uh, I've been involved in the missions committee with Glenda, uh, another area of responsibility that she oversees, and uh, several others that I don't need to mention here, perhaps. Also, um, she's encouraged me in the area of pastoral care for people who are shut in, people who are in the pavilion, sometimes in the hospital. And uh, so we've worked pretty closely together, and she's been a real encourager. I think Absolutely. that's one of her gifts. Absolutely. And, of course, she's been our church administrator, and yep. uh, the things that fit under that broad administrative uh, category are crucial to the operations side of the church. And so she's cared for all of those things that uh, I know nothing about. You might know something about, but probably not. Uh, th things like, uh, you know, uh, human resources, benefits, taxes, um, you know, the, ma managing the, the giving and uh, exactly. the contribution side of things, and so uh, the budget, finance area, all those kinds of things 
require somebody pretty special in terms of their uh, competence and the things that they need to be up to date on because some of those, those things changes change so quickly. And I can tell you, I am overwhelmed by thinking of the kinds of things that she has uh, cared for that uh, not only can I not care for them, I don't want to care for them in my pastoral role. And she's done a marvelous job in uh, caring for that broad range of things. Right, and then she had a big hand in Refresh and Renew. Oh, that's right. A massive, massive undertaking. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thankfully, we're most of the way through Refresh and Renew, just to have a few loose ends to tie. Yeah. Otherwise, I think I would be, uh, I'd be really upset about it. So. so I think we ought to have a party for her. And we will. <laughs> as a, I'm glad you brought that up. Do you have a date? We do have a date. Oh, we are going to honor Glenda on Wednesday evening. April 15 at 7.15 p.m. in the church auditorium. Just for church people? Uh, no, it's for everybody. I'm, I'm sure that Glenda has not only touched church people, but she's obviously touched people all across Shell Point. All the residents certainly should be invited to come and pay their, re, to pay their tributes to her. Yeah. And uh, it'll be an opportunity for some ministry leaders to express their appreciation uh, for her on, those, for that, on that occasion. And, uh, and especially to enjoy some refreshments and some fellowship, and also just to have a personal opportunity to uh, see Glenda and express appreciation to her. Uh, I know it's going to be uh, maybe a, an evening filled with some tears, but that's what these things are like, Absolutely. as we, uh, we do uh, recognize uh, people that have been so very valuable to us and good friends at the same time. I think she's been here for seven years, so it's quite a contribution. That's absolutely And so uh, worthy of great honor. So we'll look forward to that then. We will. That's Wednesday, uh, uh, April 15. So it's tax day, basically. Uh, <laughs> well, that's an easy way to remember it. It's, it's an easy way to remember it. She's the finance person in our, in our uh, staff. But, uh, okay. So it's tax day, April 15, 715. Uh, in the church auditorium, and it's open to everyone. Uh, we actually are, are doing this in lieu of our normal Wednesday evening service. And so it's, it's all going to be focused on, on this reception to honor Glenda Stevenson. Good. So we hope that you'll join us for that occasion. Uh, we're looking forward to having that opportunity, even though we're sad to have her leaving us. And we hope that you'll join, uh, what, no matter what your connection might be to the Village Church, simply to say uh, goodbye and thank you to Glenda Stevenson. God bless you. Well, that's going to do it for another Shell Point today. Come back tomorrow when we'll get an inside look at the Aqua Pilates Stretch class at the Aquatic Center and we'll learn about a Health Connections class on hearing loss. Until then, I'm Adam Brown, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow.